Oh my goodness, Bob, we're going on tour. This is so exciting. Listen, y'all, tickets are available right this very second. Help us yes, sell this tour out. Help us go bananas. So the next time y'all see us, we'll be at Madison Square Garden, Henny. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you something. This is the biggest tour Bob and I are doing. It's going to be great. Lights, camera, action, dancers, podcast, everything you want in a Bob and Monet show, you're going to get. So make sure you get your tickets at bobandmonet.com. Oh, and this is going to be brand new music. Ooh. All right, bobandmonet.com. Booty, 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 Bob, this booty. dress is inappropriate. Your breasts are out. Um, well, I don't know what y'all do over at um, Exchange Enterprises, but here at Bob the Dragon LLC, we believe in free the nipple and we do not censor bodies. <laughs> Why am I an enterprise and you're at LLC? Actually, I think enterprise is better, so whatever. I'm free, oh, sir. Give her a moment. Oh, God. We're, wait, oh, is Monet frozen, frozen or is it me? It was it's, you, nigga. It's Monet. It's it me? was Monet. Mm. Yeah. But it you're back now. Mm, mm, oh, that tasted. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. Ew. Um, Wait, yeah. Why am I enterprising you, LLC? Because I saw, I've seen your paperwork. And okay, first of, first of all, enterprise is way fiercer than LLC. Just so we all. Clear. Congratulations! I wasn't trying to downgrade you. That's the difference between okay. you. Okay. Mm. Do you even know what enterprise I, is? I hate when you do. This is my. This expression from you fucking irks me like a fucking bee in my goddamn bonnet, though. What? It what stopped. is that? I eat that. I hate okay. when you do that. It makes me. It makes me want to fucking. It's it because you're saying fight. things to intentionally el- elicit a response to me, and I'm not giving it to you. I'm giving you this because <laughs> I'm not giving you the response you want, Mama. Yeah, the, yeah. The other day, Bob and, I, Bob and I did a Patreon exclusive watching the the, um, the Wakanda Forever trailer and also um, um, the Woman King trailer. Which I, for Bob being a Viola Davis stan, I had no idea that Viola Davis has this fierce fucking movie coming out. I was gagged. I've also was. never said I was a Viola Davis stan. I said I like Viola Davis. People always say I look like Viola Davis. I'm a Whoopi Goldberg, Carol Channing stan. I like Viola Davis. I have never. I, I don't. I do not watch. I never watch How to Get Away with Murder. I like Viola Davis. I, I've never claimed to be a Viola Davis stan. I'm just like, oh, I like Viola Davis. When this trailer started, you literally were like, oh my God, I love her so much. I do. You, I love Viola Davis, but I'm not, like, but I'm not I a Viola Davis woman. stan. I love, yeah, I, I love Viola Davis, but I'm not a Viola Davis. I have a tattoo of you, Goldberg. This, I love, I, 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 I like Doja Cat. I don't listen, I love Doja Cat, but I don't listen to every single song on Planet Her. I listen to like three or four songs. I am a Whoopi Goldberg stan. Like, I go bananas for Whoopi Goldberg. I go So you don't go bananas hard. for Viola? I like Viola, I love I Viola Davis. Okay. I'm li- I'm listening I'm I'm listening to Viola Davis's book and I watch a lot of her movies, but I am not like I don't know her <laughs> okay. anthology. I like I I like I listen to her book. I am I'm going to see her at the meet and greet. I bought VIP tickets to see her, but I'm not a stan. I'm not a stan. I just have I'm all this stuff. I'm not a stan. I don't think everyone who who listens to or reads Viola Davis's book is a stan. I've just seen like some of her movies, not all of them. Um and I like her a lot. I, mean, I really love her work. She's a brilliant actor. Brilliant actor. Anyway, but um, the, not the movie Viola. looks very good. The movie oh, yeah, looks does. very, very good. And if you want to see our opinions about the Wakanda Forever trailer and also um, the Lion, um, the Lion, the Woman the King. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> It'll be coming out on Patreon very soon. So go over to our Patreon for a lot of, we have a lot of exclusive stuff that comes out on Patreon. A full video, I guess we haven't said this in a long time. Full video podcast. If you're just listening to this, there's a video that goes with this fucking show. And it's on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Every week, every Monday, every Wednesday, actually the day before, you get a little early, um, you get to see the full video of me and Bob, and you can see that look Bob was doing that gets on my nerves. And if you do it one more time in this podcast, I'm hanging up the call. So don't do it. I'm already doing it. She calling your bluff. And <laughs> um, also, not to mention, um, we do have a, I mean, we have, honestly, we're going to get into the episode soon, but we have an amazing Patreon, a Discord that goes with our Patreon that Monet has still yet to join. Um, we've sent her all the information to join. She just refuses. That's not true. So you have joined. Well, you got a secret I, little. You got a, a secret code name. No, the truth is that I did not get the, the paperwork to join. I didn't. Bitch, I don't know how to join. Paperwork. No, bitch, Monet. Where? That's not the truth. Ask where? everybody. Ask, Ask your producer, producer Jacob. Jacob. I send you the link. 
Where? Where'd you send it? To who? I sent you the link. I texted it to you and I sent you an email. I'm going to check. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a screen recording to show the patrons that Jacob, see, Bob and the sneaky little boyfriend, y'all. Y- no, y- Ellen, that's, no, Ellen, that's not the truth. You just don't want to go over to the Discord, honey. Just say you don't want to join them at the Discord. Just say you don't care about them and so we can move on. Can we move on to my season? The season that saved Drag Race? Inarguably. <laughs> The season that you made us do because I was on All-Star 7. Yeah, we can get to it. Let's finish it up. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 8 finale. Um, we hit finale. the red carpet. We hit the red carpet. Um, and I just got to say, as far as red carpet looks go, a lot of us really served on this red carpet. Like, I know I know that a lot of these looks are are what we wore on the um in the opening but like honestly these like opening looks were great in my opinion yeah there were a lot of i mean i think everyone always steps it up for, steps it up for the finales i don't think like y'all all look good but i don't think that's like an except like you guys like did it more like for the finale people girls really go all in and make sure like season five the season five one is really good too season five was really good um, when detox did that fucking grayscale shit it was wild but y'all all why did really why didn't you good. do a big thing for your um, so let's go <laughs> down the line. Let's start with um okay, first of all, so if you have if you have ever if you've never been to a filming of a finale of Drag Race, I've been to two. How many have you been to, Mom? I've been to two. Mine and then season eleven. Cause you had to step down as well. Yeah. yeah. So when you step down, you you're invited to the next one as well. Monet stepped down as congeniality and I stepped down as uh as the, the reigning queen. And um, it's, it's, it's a definite, like, the experience of being backstage, stepping down is so calm. Yeah, it's, it's so really relaxing. Yeah. There's no anxiety. You're just like, girl. I mean, but also, is there anxiety for you when you're, like, if you're not in the top, being at the finale, but not oh, in, like, yeah. the top four? No. When, like, in season 10, when I was in the finale, obviously, I was I didn't make it to the, to the thing, but I was there. It's because all you wear, you wear your look, and that's all you're in for the rest of the night. And then you go sit down and chill and kiki. And then if you're lucky, someone will try to, like, release butterflies in the number, and, and there'll be a really dramatic moment. You know what I mean? So that, that that's all I was. I was chilling. Me and Cracker were right in that front row sitting next to each other chilling. Girl. So you watched that live. We're not, we're not going to get oh, to that. Um, girl, I, ha- I, had, I had butterfly blood on my dress. Girl. Butterflies in the sky. Um, Butterflies on the floor. But when when you are there and you're still trying to win RuPaul's Drag Race, it is so. It is the most stressful episode of Drag Race you can film because there's a live audience, uh, mm-hmm. over a thousand people sitting in the room. Actually, yeah. they, they, the the audience is, is doesn't isn't fully full because a lot of it is also cameras and stuff like that as well. But it's a pretty packed. There might be over a thousand yeah. people in the house. Yeah, it yeah, is definitely. a packed packed house. And I believe I won Drag Race at the not at the Ace Hotel, the Orpheum, uh, the Orpheum. I won I won Drag Race at the Orpheum Theater in um, downtown, downtown LA, LA. Yeah. and DTLA, um, DTLA, Datilla, honey, <laughs> Datilla. Um, and and, but and it, we know and it, so imagine your stress, but also imagine because you at least you had a prepared number to do with it from season nine on. They have to they have to worry about doing like a lip sync and like trying to work through that. So I can imagine that's even crazier. Like the fact that you get to, but also y'all y'all also doing DragCon weekend, so y'all had to like rehearse it and do that. So yeah, it's just stressful. Oh, I forgot around. that I forgot that I was just doing like it was like it, it was like the 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 Monday after DragCon weekend. So we rehearsed for the finale during DragCon. So every night we would leave DragCon and then we would go and rehearse for RuPaul's Drag Race. And then we also were doing press in the mornings. It was wild. That's when we put Billy Bush in drag. It was wild. It was really wild. People have oh. commented. They're like, I'm trying to find this video of Bob putting Billy Bean. They knew you can't find it online. It's gone. Oh, girl, I don't, I don't doubt they scrubbed it. As soon as, they, as soon as Billy Bush was talking about grabbing pussies, I'm sure that the, the RuPaul and them was like, nah, honey. <laughs> uh-uh, honey. <laughs> Not on my gay day. Not my gay dollars. That's my favorite Violet Chachi quote. Violet Chachi. I, I, don't, I think I told the story on the, on the podcast where we were at Swing and Riches, rest in peace, Swing and Riches in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, this go go boy came up, and I think Valentina was like, Are you straight? And he was like, Yeah. And then Valachowski took all of the dollars that she had put on the table, gave them, and she goes, Not my gay dollars, and walked away. <laughs> that is one of my favorite. She's like, I'm not giving my money to this straight ass, not my gay dollars. Um, so let's go through these looks, Monet. So let's go. Uh, first we Dax have uh, exclamation, your sister. Dex looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. 
She's doing, uh, obviously, this is from, well, from the shoulders up. This is a storm. Look, this is this is storm here with that thing. This is storm. Um, and I guess what's it's the, storm. What's the mutant next gala, Jacob? The mutant next gala? The hellfire. The hellfire. This is storm at the hellfire, honey. Yeah. Uh, so storm goes to the Met is what Dax was. I think Dax looks great. This Her body looks great. She fixed the padding for the, for the reunion. That's nice. And yeah, that, that's that's not suspicious. That's not weird. Um, also, no, she's, she's walking around in those white out. I have done those white out contacts before. It it like fucks your vision up by fifty percent. Like fifty percent of your vision is gone. And then y'all are on that red carpet with like bright light suit. I'm sure she could barely see literally anything. It's so hard to do those. A lot of people thought she was RuPaul. Like people people who worked for the show kept mistaking her for RuPaul. No, all, all I'm telling you all day. All day, folks are walking up and going to be like, Rue. And she'd be like, and they'd be like, oh. <laughs> Sorry. In, Dax, in a picture you have of Dax, Kim is standing behind her. And Kim's, Kim, Kim's legs are so far apart. Why is she standing with her with such, in such a wide stance? I think because of all of the fabric. We're going to get to Kim's look soon, but because of the fabric. Layla McQueen. Um, by the way, Layla McQueen had this. Uh, they, they have all these intro intros for us. They were like, uh. Yeah. She is the beauty. It's Nacia Lopez, the queen of all nerves. It's Dax. Let's make your point. Yeah. And for Layla, it was just Michelle besides going, look out. It's Layla. <laughs> now they went back and changed it in post, <laughs> but in the moment, it was just look out. It's Layla. Um, I like, I don't understand the the babies on her tits. I like the corset. And um, I'm just, I guess she's kind of like a lingerie. She has like a night robe on with like a corset and garters and thigh high stocking. So it's like a, a nighttime bedtime look. I, I'm into the baby tits. Um, it kind of looks like um, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting. I think it's an interesting concept to have your brazier made of ba- baby doll heads. I think it's kind of interesting. It, it looks like she's going for almost like a discount universe type vibe with her look. And at the time, uh, purple was her signature color. Right, I think I she has this. shifted into blue these days. Um, but I think Bob, she looks really Bob, good. Bob trying to play real nice because Bob, Bob, Bob want to make sure that Layla keeps his keeps his his, his face card of um, <laughs> always goes through. Bob like Layla I gonna think, fuck up my makeup. I genuinely think that she looks nice. I I think the baby doll heads are really clever. I've seen other girls do it before. I wish that her shoes were purple or black though. I don't know why she yeah. got on a big silver shoe. That, that well, Layla sense. looks pretty. She, Layla always looks. This, Layla's face is one of the most stunning in Dragon Race ever. It's such a good face. This is the first time we saw Layla with like hair hair on because she was wearing those flat flat ass wigs before oh but God. um and you know I, it's been so long since i've seen Layla without a beard now i forgot she's so pretty i with oh, even, i mean she's pretty with she, a beard too but she's okay. really like but she is serving honey she's one mana with this without this beard on yeah Layla has Layla has is so, is so great at makeup she's so good so good I, Layla. so if y'all don't know Layla. I mean, she says it all the time. Or she's she's public about it. Like Layla has her eyebrows shaved, or she has a shirt and they're microbladed. But when she fills them in, Layla is so no, good. No, she's, she's not bladed. She's not bladed. Oh, she's not bladed. She just shaved them off. Okay, she so just she has, has she little, has those little. little she has the Valentinas. Yeah, got it. The, so, co- the Layla quotation fills, marks. <laughs> Layla fills them in, and you cannot tell. Like, bitch, I'd be this up in Layla's thing. Like, let me see, and you cannot tell that it is fucking marker or whatever the fuck she's using. It's yeah. so crazy. Did you know RuPaul does her own eyebrows out of drag? I didn't know that, but that's not shocking. Good for her. Yeah, RuPaul's like, yeah, she has this whole routine. Every day she gets up and does her 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 day her day brows. Oh, <laughs> and you, yeah, and you, you're, you're trying to you're trying to gather me about my my my, my space is done now, honey. We yes, we are done, honey. The cast rabbit came up in here. They got me together, honey. If y'all don't know, the a couple episodes where where she was in the, turning the camera in the corner, uh, pulling one of these so we couldn't see the bustedness. Oh, uh, hey y'all. Um. <laughs> um, well, congratulations! It looks very, very nice. Your wall looks these are very three, nice. There's three rows deep. Like I can finally have all my shoes out. Do you know I did, I did a count? Guess how many shoes I have? There's enough. There's two more racks up here. Okay, um, it looks like it's like one, two, three, four. It's probably like. Eight pair per rack. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's like uh, uh, sixty-four pair of shoes. I have seventy-eight. You only have two feet. <laughs> um, Monet a used to. Stupid joke, mm, thank but that's you. funny. Monet used to um, have the same pair of shoes in every color. It was the exact same pair of only makers, just over and over and over again. Tell that cat to get her ass down. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god! And hey, I, and I had y'all. I'm so mad because this. I recently I went like a purge on my phone. And I deleted pictures. I was like, I'm not ever going to use this picture. And the picture I had of Bob, it was a picture of when Bob and I went to Todrick's house. And Bob had two of Todrick's cats on his lap talking about some. And I deleted the fucking picture. But I used to have the goddamn picture. And I'm going to text. I'm going to find. I'm did gonna, you? Uh, yes, did I you did. Have picture? And you know I did. Stop acting like I did because you know I did. You know I had the pictures. Where, where, uh, to quote my, my dear friend, where's the ocular proof? <laughs> I need ocular proof. <laughs> Honey. Let's move on to uh, uh, Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Do you want to see my cuckoo? Um, I don't love this dress. It's not my favorite either. It's also that like the blatant, obvious nude illusion part in the front is like a little like it takes you out of the fantasy. Yeah, she looks nothing like a noodle. Um, but she did have a uh, a cutout over her butt with a heart, which I thought was a very clever little oh, nod out? to her. Uh, yeah, but it was like a like a mesh ass cutout. Over her cuckoo, um, but I, but I but I do you know I think I would like the hair if it didn't get bigger in the middle, if the balls were getting smaller and smaller, but they just mm-hmm. get randomly get bigger like right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, the hair I think it's cool mm-hmm. though. It's, it's, it's it has a dip in that red and it like ombres down a little bit. I think that looks that was great. Let's go on to Nashiana Lopez. This seems so simple um, for Nasha. This yeah. is, I mean, this is Miss Continental. This seems like, I'm like, she would not wear this to Miss Continental. She would turn it up. Well, I think maybe she was, I don't know. Maybe she was like, you know, maybe I think some, I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe she's kind of like, well, I'm not competing again. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just fucking here to show up and, and hoof it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it is word. simple. I, I do think it's as simple, but it is still, it's not nothing. It is for a pedestrian, it'd be very complex. You yeah, know? I agree. I'd agree with that. Um, let's go on to. Um, but it's, it's, oh, it's, it's fine. Ask yeah, it's fine. Ask somebody looks amazing. This is next fucking. This looks so good. Made by Domino Couture. Yeah. And you know, all those, all those, uh, those, those like abdomen and like little. That's a uh, a sharpie. Is it really? Domino drew. Domino just drew that in with like a sharpie. Maybe maybe, maybe, they, maybe it's touched up with a sharpie. There's like I think there might be airbrushing and some touching up. But I, I also think I'm not sure. But I think that maybe Domino made it and Acid Betty painted it. But I might be making that up. Mm. But maybe Acid Betty was doing with a sharpie. Was playing with a sharpie. I remember seeing someone. Coloring it in with a sharpie, if, whether it was Betty or Domino, but Acid Betty looks absolutely, absolutely, it's one of the best looks of the night. Absolutely stunning. One of the best looks of the night. I agree. She looks really? so good. Acid Betty is a very, very visually stunning queen. So good. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Robbie Turner in stunning. a lace front. And Hello, somebody. Bitches. You said visually stunning. Let me go to this bitch's girl. She, the face, literally the opposite of visually stunning. She looks <coughs> horrible. Maybe it's, it's not great. I don't. I don't think it's horrible. I mean, the dress is fine. No, no, not 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 the dr- the dress is fine. Face. Oh, dragger! Wow, yikes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is um, this is not. I mean, this is this is per- this is. I think this look is perfectly fine, and it's not like I'm not knocked over. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would agree. It's fine. It's yeah, it's fine. Dorji Thor, who's also wearing Domino Couture. I think I yeah, she's wearing Domino Couture. Uh, this was yeah. a really interesting look. Domino Dorji uh, notoriously said on the show that she doesn't wear gowns, so she right. decided she didn't want to wear a gown for this either. She's wearing a, like a cat suit with a bathing suit over it, and this like this. It's um, a character, like, Jacob. What's the character plastic. name? Light, Light bright. <coughs> it's a character. It's a, it's a character. Gumby. No, it's not Gumby. I forgot Gumby. the name of this. I forget the name of his character. It's like a it's it's a girl and she's like a superhero. She has like powers. It's a specific it's a, she's doing a specific interpretation of someone. Oh, I'm 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 very oh, intrigued by this look that. though. Thorgy? I I think it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah we gotta move on. I think it looks really cool though. I think it looks the really cool. cool. And um I think the whole thing is cool. The idea yeah, the of this thing. like cat suit with this Yeah, I think it's a cool look. Um I I think I cannot confirm, but I think Derek Barry is wearing Josh Ponte. I think. Why do you think? Like you like and remember? I feel like I have a memory of her saying, "This is Josh Ponte. Who's Vegas? Right? No, he's Chicago. Oh, really? Okay, maybe not. Um, but I do love that. Uh, I think no, Derek Barry is wearing like a, um, India Fair. I 
I do think that Tarek is, it looks like a stepped up version of her red carpet realness look from um, the Bitch Perfect episode. Like it was a cocktail dress and now it's like this like, I think she looks good. She, and she finally figured out those fucking eyebrows. She yeah, finally got them. Eight months later, she got those brows together. Yeah, Derek looks good. She looks she's perfectly normal. It's not like show stopping. It's not but in, in person with the stones. It may have been like, oh my god, but she looks, she looks good. Yeah, she's pretty. Cheech Devane. Cheechy Devane. She went on her makeup today, honey. She's giving you know, drama. I think she was like sick of like you know there there was this um I remember Chichi said to me um we were we I don't know if it's ever aired. But we were all sitting backstage, and Kim and Naomi used to really go in on me and Chi-Chi about our makeup. Like, they would go in on us, like, be just what felt at the time, like, mean to us about our makeup. And then Chi-Chi was like, girl, I can draw some geometric shapes on my face, too. And then Kim Chi goes, <laughs> well, then why don't... Then Kim Chi goes, well, then why don't you? Work. And I don't... She goes, why don't you? And then I remember at the finale... Chi Chi found me. She was like, Siga, I could do them geometric shapes too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think that moment stuck with Chi Chi. Because if you look up close, Chi Chi's eyebrows are also kind of like these like rectangles almost. This is a really cool look. Yeah, I think Chi Chi looks great. I like I like the gown. I like how yeah, it goes into like the little petal triangle shapes from the waist down and like the, the little gauntlet she has on. So I think she looks great. Um, let's go into Bob the Drag Queen. I'm wearing a, a Domino Couture uh, gown with a cape um, that is painted by Tyler Wallach. This dress is... Uh, I donated this dress to the Carol Channing estate and oh. they put it up in a in some museum somewhere um, in, 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 in like through her charity. It was like, by way of the Carol Channing estate, here's this dress from Bob the Drag Queen. Wow. Um, and as I went out, as I, I, there's a long train. This is hand painted. As I walked out, um, kimchi steps on my cape as we're going out and rips my cape off my shoulder. No, but the whole cape came off. I'm not kidding you. I was livid, <laughs> livid. This is, this is, this is, so what happens is they call all the girls one by one, one by one by one, one by one. And then we all like go back and then we all come out again at, at, at the same time. And as I walked out, Kim, this she is for the fucking for press. stepped. No, this is on the stage, bitch. <laughs> this is like, this is, this, this aired. There's, there's probably a clip of me like pulling, slightly tugging on my little capelet to keep my shit up. Um, but anyway, that yeah, being said, I really love this dress a lot. I love this dress. Yeah, it's nice. It fits you really great. I like the hair combo with it. I think it looks great. Looks really good. I try to keep this bob. These, this is two bobs stacked, and I tried to keep them going for a while. But girl, travel. I I did not know how to travel with. Uh, I did not learn the how to travel with wigs. Well, right now, Patty and I are just a human, so we repair. He prepares them every city, so they get fresh every time. Um, when I used to have style pieces, I would stuff the cap with like plastic bags, and I'll put it in a bag and put it in a suitcase. Because sometimes girls put them in like big like cases like that. But when you do that, like that takes up so much space. When if it's a it's a stunning style, just stuff the cap, put it in another bag, and you can put stuff around it and keep it secure, as opposed to having a big ass plastic case taking up a mad space in your suitcase. It's too much. Yeah, I put it in a Tupperware dish and I put that in the in the suitcase because it always shows up pristine. Unless listen to me, any traveling people out there who want to travel with style synthetic wigs. Actually, human wigs are even worse with this. If you travel with a style, first of all, you don't. If you have a human you don't wig, style. you style yeah, it. You don't travel styles. No. If if a human wig is styled, it is styled one time, and I mean one. The moment the heat reaches your head, whatever style it had, she's done. You oh, know no. what I mean? But if you, the only only style that, would, that can last like a, it's like a ponytail. But if you try to like have like waves or something like that, it's oh it's yeah, not yeah, gonna, yeah 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 style every time yeah. Yeah, nigga. Anyway, um, but if you have a, if you have a nigga, you remember the time that a certain girl from Chicago was like, she called me a nigga, (laughs) and I was like, about me or you? You that I called them a nigga? Yeah. Was she black? Yeah, she she was the one from Chicago. The one, Monet. The one from Chicago that we don't talk about on the podcast anymore because it gets messy every time. Oh, so she's mad. Anyway, I don't remember, but sure. 
Anyway, um, but if you take your wig off your head while it is still warm, while you are still sweating, you have to let it air out. Otherwise, the wig, the heat will transfer and your wig will come out rancid and yeah. it will be and it will be shaped like the Tupperware. But your wig will be <laughs> on a 90 degree, bitch, on a 90, because the heat from your head is enough to slightly reset the wig. Anyway, but yeah, yeah, always, always put your wigs, your padding, your everything in front of a fan. Dry. As soon as you get off stage, let it dry. Have a have an outfit for the meet and greet that you can wear that requires no padding or something. If you do a post meet and greet or a walk around, that you can walk around, let what you are wearing, everything you are wearing, it needs to dr- be bone dry or as close to bone dry as possible before you pack it away. And when you go to your hotel, if it's not dry, then put it out on the couch. Because you do not want to pack away wet drag. So anyway. back in the day when I would, when I was uh, traveling the world and working or whatever, and I would always come back because I I'm a sweaty queen. We know this. I am a sweaty queen. I bitch. I think I think too hard. I am sweating. Right. So get done with the gig, and I would bring always Patty. And I would always bring an IKEA bag, and I would carry the IKEA bag with my wet stuff, and like put it all over the room to dry. So then back, so then I would call trade over, and chair would come over. They have a stone leotard, a fucking blonde wig, uh, this and that, the other. They're just looking at me like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, Girl, I mean, also I if you're gonna be they, they fucking know who you are too, usually. <laughs> but you know me, girl. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was fucking hood niggas. I was I was fucking uh, DL motherfucker. So they were just like, "What you do?" I was like, I'm, "I'm a costumer at a at a Broadway show. We're traveling the tour, the show around." People from the hood watch RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> I'll not have the, you know, not the niggas I was fucking. <laughs> um, let's go on to Kim Chi. This is one of my favorite Kim Chi outfits. I think about ah, it all so the time. I think about this outfit all the time. I want to know where this outfit is. I want this outfit. I should ask him, where is this? Like, can I have this? Like, this should, is we, should such... I call her right now? Yeah, call, call her up. Her. You call her. Well, no, you, you well, always trying to give me. No, no, you've been on a <laughs> no, roll with not getting answered lately. And I want you to keep keep your not getting answered up. Honey. She looks really good. She's like, she's like a she's like a fairy. The things, these are wings. They look like wings. She's like a fairy gauntlet. She looks, this is a really great Kim look. This is really, really great. Now let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> Naomi yeah, this gone is the on record. ugliest piece of crap I have ever seen in not in my life. This is this is the worst of the of the night. Yeah, this might be the worst of the season. This I don't know. Okay, not this season. What? I don't know. This is this is bottom five of the whole season. You think this is worse sure. than Cynthia Lee Fontaine's roller skate look? No, I I had I had to rethink about it. This is bottom five of the season. This look is. I think this is crazy. worse than Derek Barry's Tin Man look. <sighs> Is this worse? I said than, bottom five of the season. No, I, I don't think it's bottom five. Do you think this is worse than Robbie Turner's um, line look? No, girl. So she, it's not bottom five. <laughs> well, you've only named you've only named three looks that's worse than this one. I need I need at least two more for it to uh, not be bottom five. Uh, honey. Uh, 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 bother the drag queen. And don't robot try to say look. nothing. I did. Don't try to say nothing. I, had, I was because I was tooted that week. I got I got a toot from Raja, honey. Yeah. <laughs> The girl who should have won several challenges that you won. <laughs> you are such a fucking bitch. Well, yeah, on, honey. Uh, if you watch, if you watch my episode with Naomi in the pit stop season fourteen, Naomi does this whole monologue about how much she hates this look. She thinks it's the ugliest she has ever looked in drag. She thinks she looks like Princess Fiona from Shrek. <laughs> bitch, I'm glad. I'm glad that we're all on the same page. Okay. Uh, and this picture, this particular picture of her is. <laughs> Extremely racist. It is extremely homophobic. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Yeah, this is not great, Naomi. And Naomi's my icon, but this is not it, girl. This is wild. The fucking little it was buns. A- <laughs> <laughs> I love Naomi so much. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. So now my my season was uh actually not the last season anymore because they just did it recently on season fourteen. But um, for a did long they? time, from seven. Oh yeah, they did. From seven through from eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, no, from ten through thirteen, they did not do those individual performers. They only did it for like nine. a few seasons. Me, seven and seven and eight did it. Nine didn't do it. Yes, nine, from nine to them. thirteen, they did not. Yeah, and th- so it's only seven, eight, and fourteen that did these. Like they they write original songs for us to perform, and let's talk about these performances. So I did. You um, first. I did. I I don't. I don't like to show off. Uh, all these songs were written by Lucian Piani, 
And um, can I just tell you that these shoes I danced in are so tall. And I mean the I heel those. to toe rate the heel to toe ratio is but I put them on again recently and I was like, how was I dancing? Wow, that's back I when you had good knees. knees. Okay, all right, Monet. And let's talk about. Oh, by the way, some people released some footages of you with your exploding foot at Roscoe's. Oh yeah, the investigation <laughs> continues. O- that, that's ocular proof. <laughs> I did not, Monica. I took up both my shoes at Roscoe's. Yeah, so, so the, it's spreading. It's contagious. It's, it's <laughs> spread to the other foot now. <laughs> anyway, um, this was. This was. But I was. Uh, this was the best performance of the night. This you were if your body looked oh, and last episode, read the comments. There are more more people than not are like Bob has a great body, but I wouldn't say Bob is known for his body. Bob is known for being very funny, for being a comedian. No one is like, oh yeah, Bob is known like that's not a thing. Anyway. It's so weird because you were just going on about my body. Go ahead, continue again. What were you saying about my body? Go your ahead. body looks really good. And um your whole your whole look match your whole look matched the match the song so well. You put you the choreo was really funny. It was you started in the audience. Like it was it was the best one of the night. But you're you're known for being a very good performer, so um that's that all makes sense. You, and you think you're known for being funny? You think you're known for that? Yes, I do. People, yes, I do. Comment below. Do you think? Do you think I'm known um, for being funny? Think, like yeah. you're known for people, people like Monet. She's the one that's really funny. Like Monet is. Everyone like tell me about Monet. People are people like she sings. She she has a great talk show. She's really good at interviewing people. And she's Everyone, really funny. People, you, you think people lead in with she's really funny? Monet yes. is like known yes. for her humor. Y'all, oh my God, y'all, y'all, can y'all please light this ball black bitch up in these comments? Let this nigga know, y'all. Let this black bitch know. Uh, how about I, I'll, I'll post a list on my Twitter? Be like, list your top twenty funny queens. You think you'll make the list? Twenty. <laughs> oh will you make the list? Will you make yes. the list? Is a que- yes, just I will. question. Yes, I will. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, um, <laughs> this entire a, outfit you're a toxic came from person. I was just wondering. This entire outfit came from Santi Alley, every except the shoes, um, because I was like, I'm not spending a crazy amount of money on this because I wanted it to look a certain way. I was gonna get some custom jeans made. I was gonna get a custom jersey. I was like, I'm just gonna get it done like this. I really enjoy this outfit. I thought it looked really good. And also, I'm not wearing a corset hair at all. I'm wearing really? no corset hair. Yep, no corset because I wanted to be able to like really move and and get those moves and stuff. So I was. This might have been the last time that I thought my body looked. Good without a corset. Because I, in New York City, I, when I would do like the big shows, I wouldn't wear a corset either. But when I was skinnier, I just didn't need to wear a corset. But then, girl, time gathered me, honey. Time gathered me. Kitty. Wow. Wow. Say hi. <laughs> Y'all hear my little kitty, right? She's such a little goofball. I love my little Colleen. You know, I can always count on her to keep me entertained and to come when I call. If you had this on speaker, your cat probably came when I did the wow, wow. See, there she goes again. Kitty. Okay, back up, girl. I'm doing a commercial. Anyway, I can also always count on Pretty Litter because it's the only cat litter I will ever use, and here are the reasons why. Pretty Litter crystals change color to detect early signs of potential illnesses like metabolic acidosis, that's a mouthful, which can cause diabetes, urinary tract infections, and kidney issues. So many more, too. Pretty Litter is ultra-absorbent, and it instantly traps odor. It's lightweight, dust-free, and works up to a month without clumping. That means no more wasting litter, girl. Uh, uh, uh. Plus, Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag, and you never run out because it comes like clockwork at the beginning of the month, and it's why I love it. You don't have to bring no big old container and lug it through the, uh, uh, the garbage bag aisle. Lug it through the frozen section. It just comes to your door, girl. It's various. Once you try Pretty Litter, it'll be the only cat litter you will ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. Prettylitter.com slash rivalry. I am an incredibly busy, busy, busy businesswoman, and I'm always working on different projects. You know, when I have a lot, I'm always telling like you about what? a new idea I have. I've never seen them. 
<laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm writing a book. You know, I'm working on music. You know, I oh, always yeah, yeah. have a lot of stuff going on. And because I'm trying to get music, I'm always interested to in see how other artists compose their music and how they write their songs. I really got into masterclass for learning how different people like do the process. You know, Alicia Keys, my best friend, has masterclass, and that I absolutely <laughs> love. You and are I was so it, sick. It you're was so really sick. fun. And okay, she's my best friend. Sorry, like you're demoted, bitch. You're demoted. Um, it's really fun. It's informative, and I was blown away by the depth and knowledge and the quality of the experience, honey. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, improve acting skills with Natalie Portman, or learn writing from Issa Rae. Yes, Miss Insecure herself. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Masterclass is accessible on your well, phone. I don't want to interrupt you, but Gordon Ramsay has cooked for me before. Natalie Portman is also a dear friend of mine. And Issa Rae, we're both HBO sisters. So I, I pretty much know all these people. I can probably just add, call them up. What 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 do Gordon Ramsay cook? What do he cook? Three, two, uh, exactly. Beef Wellington for Jacob. Beef, <laughs> Jacob got a beef Wellington. <laughs> Ah. Masterclass. You can get Masterclass on your phone, on the internet, or smart TV. Offering classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their fields. You know, Masterclass did look to me to teach them a Masterclass on beauty, but um, I was busy. So, guys, I will try my... I will get there soon. Trust, trust, trust. I will get there soon. Learn how to do anything from finish your screenplay to make Michelin star-worthy scrambled eggs. Whatever they should you're contact in. you to have a master class on booty. That's the one the more they can teach, honey. Ooh, I can teach that class. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you're interested in, there's a master class just for you. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every master class. And as a sibling rivalry listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash rivalry. That's masterclass.com slash rivalry for 15% off master class. Um, Kim looks incredible kim mm-hmm. this is kim looks very majestic she looks really fierce and I, what i like about this is each of your songs her song was called fat Femination. asian asian yeah and um and kim kim didn't do a whole lot of dancing there was there were there was a lot of handography when they all did the mm-hmm. like that all looks really cool it was very visually a uh, vi- visually pleasing but kim was not doing a whole bunch of choreo because that's not kim strong suit do you remember when kim was just going yeah <laughs> like she was just <laughs> y'all the, the crowd was acting like she was fucking gravity mark jacobs the crowd was acting like kim was like i was like Bob, when, when i was at peace and, and kim did that we were we a lot of us were crying it was really <laughs> good it was very impressive <laughs> like <laughs> Come I'm not gonna lie. When I was in competition mode, I was in my my real toxic space, and I was watching it on the monitor. And when she started punching and people would cheer, I was downstairs like, <sighs> <laughs> I was downstairs like, oh my, God, this bitch is punching air. And then Na- and and Naomi was next to me. She was like, oh, she's so cute. I just loved her. And I was like, because at the time I was like, Kim is the at the time, I was like, Kim is the only thing standing between that could possibly be standing between <laughs> me and the crown. And Kim had more fans on her side. Kim yeah. had a bigger online presence. And in the, uh, you know, the are you team so and so, Kim had the, I think I had the most on Twitter, but Kim had the most on Instagram. So I was, I'm, or vice versa, or something like that. But Kim was like, the fans were rooting for her. And I was like, this, fuck this fucking bitch punching <laughs> some air. <laughs> then the Georgia's came punching the ghost. I guess I guess that's a secret punching <laughs> thing. Um, Naomi Smalls looks Majestic. beautiful, so, so but she's beautiful. Um, that? Also, that, that was a uh, Kennedy, Kennedy, Davenport, Kennedy Davenport did a bit. Um, um, do you want to show Tamar? Um, we were at dinner the other day, and uh, I, uh, uh, Monet's. Boyfriend said something. Didn't know some. Oh, I didn't know that Monet did a show a like a whole vegan. Bob was listening. Bob started saying stuff, and every time I was like, "Bobby doesn't know that." Bob was like, "You don't know that." <laughs> he doesn't know anything. No, but what was wild because I. So what happened was he didn't know that Monet did a whole vegan show on <laughs> on YouTube, like an entire eight episode series with like Alaska Nicole Byer, <laughs> with a set and a sound and a crew. 
and buckets of vegan food in her home. He's and very then, um, And then I said, and I was like, you didn't know that she did? She goes, he goes, huh? I said, do you even watch the show, Tamar? Which took us down a like, whole other way. And then he was like, what? What? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, Andy. Um, anyway, I also thought the the dancers looked so hot. Like what they were wearing during the Amish number, I remember being like, they look so hot. Like I was like, I was like, y'all look so good. I was like so upset. They look so good. Yeah. It was just these little black booty shorts, but I was like, they look so hot. I remember being very hot and bothered. I, I, I like this and I, again we said it 19 times and we Bob and I both said it on our perspective pit stops and stuff but doing these numbers and maybe it's be, it feel, I like it so much because we don't have it so often if it, if it was this every season I might get bored of it again but season 14 and thinking about watching this season and finale these numbers are curated for these girls because it, it lets everyone do the thing they can do Bob is a good dancer and all that stuff so Bob did all that in his stuff Kim is not she likes to punch things she did that in her <laughs> Naomi, Naomi. Kim likes to punch air <laughs> you know what I mean, and but maybe if it was, it, it became like a, a regular thing, it would be boring. But I really do like this a lot. I love, 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 love. Naomi's song was called Leg Day. I really like Naomi's song a lot oh. too. Every, I mean, Leg Day is a is a real bop. Every day is Leg, leg day. day. I think that Naomi actually of the songs, I think Naomi had the best song. I think I had the best performance. Yeah, I would agree. Naomi best song, you best performance. I would agree with that for sure. Um, yeah. this was yeah, back was, when, remember was, Naomi, was Naomi was wearing those, like, this was, Naomi made those popular. The, the like, the encrusted, um, crystal necklace choker ones, the big ones. Naomi popularized that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I remember Naomi popularizing that. You know, some 85-year-old queen about to light you up. Probably. Some 95-year-old queen from, uh, Bebop's in, uh, Alabama about to fucking <laughs> let you know, honey. <laughs> This was also the last time that all of the winners of RuPaul's Drag Race had assembled. This is the this was literally the very last time wow. that everyone who had won Drag Race was in one space. Wow! And if now you include, you- I mean, I don't know if I don't know if you can really include me because I hadn't won Drag Race at the time. So this this was this is I think this is the most winners of Drag Race that have ever assembled in one place before. Work and they did not. Disappoint. Isn't that kind of wild? That's crazy. BB, let's start with BB. BB looks incredible. I love this. This blue Stunning. with this animal print, it's really, it's it's a really good combo. It's actually not blue. It's not just blue. It's not lapis. It's not turquoise. It's actually cerulean. I um, no, she looks so good. This is so amazing. And I just, it, it really, you know, sets BB. It, I, I believe when you are BB's a harbinet, you, you have to be at a thousand every time because you are the 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 drag the standard for like she set the standard for what it means to win drag race yeah agreed agreed, agreed. you know it's really good next up was James for being known as Tyra and um this kid this it's not Kelly Green it's more of like a cartoon green it's like a, a power it's not series. Kelly Green it's not a Hunter Green it's not um Lime Green it's actually um Bibbidi Bob uh-huh. Green I'm just kidding <laughs> um fun fact this outfit uh didn't zip in the back. So she, so that we had to like there was like a lot of jimmy rigging and camera angling because we could we couldn't get it to zip. I, Why I was, was it was small? T- yeah, it was a little, it was a little small. Yeah, damn. But Tyra looks great. I would I would wear this. Is is it a cape yeah. or these sleeves? It's a cape. Yeah. Oh, she saw your look, girl. She made that shit backstage. Honey, capes on the runway. Cape. The theme is capes. Capes. A trend, a trend capes. alert. Trend alert. Um, Raja came out as Madonna, Mad, giving him yeah. a, a Madonna look. I don't love this Raja look. Um, but I don't hate it. Like I don't, I don't. Also, Raja thought, was litty like a titty. Well, Raja's Girl, always Raja, litty like a titty. No, she was like visibly lit. Like she had, uh, she had, the, she she was tipping the bottle, girl. She she had that Sauvignon Blanc, girl, on tap. Um and I something about this gold corset being on top of these pants is so wrong, but it's I love it. It's so right. Well, I think I mean it is it is a direct nod to you know, yeah, Madam oh, M. Did Madam M have the corset over the pants? Yes. The lead. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, you did um, you did one little thing with Madonna. Please stop acting like you are. You can't let no, but you did nothing. one you did one little thing with Madonna. I did a let, show you, with you Madonna. Can, you can't let niggas have nothing. No, bitch, you did one little thing with Madonna. <laughs> Next bitch. up is the queen that owns the flavor of Blood Orange. It's Sharon Needles. 
Um, you know, it's it's a, it's a fine suit. It's a, it looks it looks fine. It's, it's it, the 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 fabric itself is a little bit busy, and I just also just hate talking about Sharon needles. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. It looks a little ill-fitting, though. Uh, but when's the last time you were in the same room as her? Bitch, when we were on tour, when we were on tour in Asia, Australia, and we were doing that tour, and um, Sharon would drink during the show, and then she'd come out to do her number, and it was she was singing live. She was singing Mars from Aliens Attack, and mm-hmm. then she would. It was a to a to a to a karaoke track, and then she would be like drunk by the time her number right. She would because she would come and do her number. Off stage and she would fuck it up. Come off stage and they're crying, Bob, crying. Like, I don't understand why they change the song every night. Why is it never the same? Why is it never the same? And you know, you know, Query gets lit on tour. And Query goes, Because you're fucking drunk. <laughs> Girl, the dysfunction. The dysfunction. <laughs> Can you imagine that us? I'm just drunk on tour and Bob trying to gather me. Girl, never. Uh, hopefully, I don't Smoking have to imagine it this, while this doing fall. Your, your job high while working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine. Imagine if I had, had a co worker who was Jacob, leaning off. My, like it hits. Jacob, mind your fucking business. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> that clip of me in New York when we were filming the thing and me, that shit, I watch that all the time and it cracks me up. You. What was, clip? <laughs> when I leaned up and smoked the thing and I was like, you're like, oh. you're like, you're like, Monet, what are you doing? I was like, nothing. <laughs> so I know your ass could never lie as a child. You are so bad. You have no poker face, Monet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, let's go into Chad Michaels. Chad Michaels is doing a take on Mugler's, uh, I think it's called a lobster dress. Um, it's the chimera dress. The chimera, yeah. That's the chimera dress. And uh, I, I, do not, I do not love this take. Personally. <laughs> I don't love it. I think the Chimera dress is really hard to replicate, and if you don't, it just it just looks like a cheap version of it. And I don't I don't think she did a great job here. I think it's good. I think it's good. I like it. I think. Um, would you I wear it? Would you wear uh, it? I don't think I would, I would wear the original Chimera dress. Bitch, shut your fucking fake lying ass up. <laughs> you wouldn't wear Mugler's Chimera dress. <laughs> it can't fit me. It's not even an option. Not on the table. But if we, if we got one, let's say I had the the click click clackety to do it, you you would be like, I'm just not interested. <laughs> I'll wear it if you did it for me. But would you wear if I could get this dress in your side? Would you wear it? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, nigga. Anyway, let's move on to uh, drinks monsoon. Actually, she doesn't drink anymore. Jinx monsoon. Just um, no smokes I, monsoon. I love this this dress. It looks really good on her. She looks great. It looks good. I like it. Some re- the way I wish. Come, come, get get down. Oh my! You sound like a country ass mom. <laughs> Y'all sit your ass down in there. Let me grab. Let me grab a Red Bull so I can get through this even. We got a lot of shit to go through. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh my god. Not I'm a lot so of sorry, shit. Miss Exchange. That's so rude. What was Colleen doing? She just she tries to she jumped on the shredder. Have you had the sugar free coconut? Sugar free coconut Red Bull. They have a sugar free one. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I like it. I like coconut flavor stuff though. Uh, Can you explain what Colleen was doing for our listeners? Oh, so what Colleen was doing? I have a paper shredder in here. Um, because if you don't have a paper, let me tell y'all, if you throw, stop throwing your bills out or like when credit card companies send you like things for credit cards, if you, if someone finds it in the garbage and again, it's not, it, who knows if they will, people can get credit cards in your name. There's like, there's like a whole, I watched a whole YouTube video on it today. You should shred them. Just buy a shredder. They cost like, you can get one for like 25 bucks and have a shredder. Anyway, she just hopped on the shredder and she's this? poking through the blinds. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I'm breaking my blinds up. And when I move out of here, I'm going to have to give you motherfuckers money for some blinds. Have you seen this, this? There's this trend on TikTok where it's like five t- five things I would never do now that I've been a lawyer for ten years. You should make a list like five things you would never do after like studying opera, or five things you'd never do after working at a hotel. Oh, that's a good idea. I you posted a TikTok 
And you were obviously it was it was a satirical TikTok making fun of that thing, but it's of of, of crunched of cringe TikToks. Oh. But yours was so cringy. I literally I couldn't. I wanted I wanted to fall into the fetal position watching you do it. You just say one thing you would never do after working with your co-host for the past five years. One thing I would never do after the podcast was podcast with someone for five years is agreeing to fifty percent. I should own seventy five percent of the company. Interesting. And who who would take that shit deal with you? People who know that what a fucking treat it is to fucking work with me. Mm -hmm. Let me try it now. No one knows about the treat of work with Monet quite like me. Not even Lazy Bunny, honey. <laughs> yeah, I like jinxes. Monet, you should make make one make one of these videos. Monet, make one of those videos. I will. I will. I will. Um, I like Jinx. You have to do this. You have to do the, the cage mouth. Do they do that? Oh, j oh they my love god, my middle finger's crooked. Bitch, you're high. Keep moving. <laughs> um, I like Jinx's dress. I wish there was more of like an ombre between the tool and the way the dress starts. It was a little stark for me. Ombre. <laughs> but um that's but I think I, I love the gold and I love the shoulders. And I think I think it looks good. Let's move on to Bianca Del Rio. Bianca Del Taco. I don't, only thing I don't like about the dress is the bottom. I don't like. I don't like how the bottom trumpets out. I wish it was like either straight down or like a full on mermaid. Yeah, like I a agree. bigger mermaid. I agree. <laughs> Agreed. I agree. I mean, I like the she did a little take on her boat neck. Well, the once no, it's the same thing. Yeah, um, having those these little petals or these peacock feather looking things. Um, yeah, it's great. <clears throat> and let's talk about this girl. Well, first, let's talk about the episode before we get here. So we had some really amazing moments. Where it was really interesting because I felt like me and Naomi got some really, like, moving moments with RuPaul mm -hmm. during our conversations with Ru. Like, I got a I got a message from Carol Channing. Carol Channing. Carol Channing. Um, Carol, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Canning. I got a message from my mom. Naomi Smalls had, like, almost all of her siblings there. It was, like, all this stuff. And then RuPaul was like, Kim, when's the last time you fell, you dumb bitch? Oh you dumb, God. clumsy cunt? I was like, my God, Jesus. <laughs> Wait, did RuPaul ever say the N-word while you on, on... You've done Drag Race three times. you ever heard RuPaul say the N-word? Yeah, I've heard twice. He, he said it on season 10 of season... And he's also, also on All Stars 4 for something. <laughs> yeah, because someone tweeted out. Someone was like, does anyone ever say the N-word on Drag Race? And I was like, yeah, I said it a few I've times. I've said it multiple Untucked. times. It never comes out. There. Yeah, I, I said it during Untucked, and I said it... I never said it on the main stage. But I've said it, it just, I've never had a reason, I, I've never, it's never come up on the main stage, but I've said it during Untucked and I've said it during, um, in the, in the, in the workroom. Um, and, and I was like, and RuPaul says it in the, RuPaul has said it in the workroom too. And everyone online is like, wait, RuPaul said the N word? I was like, yeah, yeah. Black. Like, why, why y'all so shocked this old ass <laughs> black man is saying the N word? Yeah. RuPaul Charles. I, I want there are probably people out there who like come over to our YouTube page and are like, oh my god, they're saying the N word. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, nigga. Shandra, like, y'all thought uh, this Sh shit Shandra, was. Shandra and her mom be like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> has Shandra ever mentioned could we talk about Shandra's <laughs> disdain for you? She, has she ever brought that up Bitch, to you before? She, she she next door. Not gonna know ask her. <laughs> she right there. For those of you don't know, Monet did a, a New Year's Eve gig with uh, Shangela once, and Monet was doing a Cardi B song, and she asked Monet not to do the number. <laughs> <laughs> she asked Monet not to do the number. It was, was like, like, bitch. She's was like, my, gra my grandma's a big fan of yours. <laughs> my grandma saw you up there. <laughs> Isn't that what she said? Also, I want ocular proof that Grandula's a big fan. I want ocular proof. I want Grandula saying soak it up. <laughs> Can you ask Angela about that? I'll ask her about it. Maybe, maybe we'll bring on, on on the pod. Oh yeah, Chandler does not. Chandler does. Chandler kind of avoids uh, podcasts and stuff where she has to give like like Chandler doesn't want to do the pit stop, which makes sense. She goes, she, she's like, I just don't want to critique anyone's drag. I don't want to judge anyone. I don't want to critique anyone. That's just not my place to do that kind of thing. And I feel like she might be like, I don't do y'all's podcast. <laughs> I'll ask her though. But ask I feel like she'd be like, no, girl, I don't do y'all's podcast. Because we I've asked a few celebrities. They were like, no, nah, I don't do podcasts because I'm gonna get on there and say some shit that don't need to be said. <laughs> um and yeah, and the interview is really nice. I I I 
with you and Naomi though, well, it's kind of a trend in RuPaul when he does, when he does interviews. Like season, we have season ten, but and, and he always he asks a few nice ones. He asks like a like a little a deep question to kind of like dig in there, and Kim just didn't get that moment. Yeah, Kim. Yeah, it, I I kind of felt like she didn't even like him. I got to be honest with you. Also, can we, Jake? We didn't get a picture of um, RuPaul's dress. Um, it was a very interesting dress. It was like tinsel or like uh, plastic. It, it was a very, very interesting. Did it look nice um, in person? Garment. Yeah, it looked pretty good. It, it, it looked good. It, it, I, I think she looked. She looked nice. Uh, it wasn't my favorite dress of hers from a finale or anything. One of my favorites fact, really, is his RuPaul. I love season, her season nine. Yes, the season nine one. Top tier. Yeah. Top love that tier. one. Love, love that one. Okay, so let's talk about this moment. So we let's do them in order. So first, we got to talk about me, Naomi, and, and and Kim before we talk about Violet. Okay, Jacob, can you so, put it there? I don't. I mean, I remember what. The, oh, it's at the end. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So Kim. So Kim's wearing a dress that was made by Dallas Coulter. Dallas Coulter, the Lady Hyde, made this dress, and Dallas has made some stuff for me and and for Monet actually. You, you know that picture of Monet sitting on the suitcases in that in that like tweet uh, suit or yeah. something. Uh-huh. That's Dallas, right? Yeah, it's Dallas. Yeah. Um, and it's like, and anyway, that's the point. So Kim was like, it's, this, this is like a, I think this is like a Givenchy origami dress, like remake thing. Uh-huh. And Kim was like, my dress is going to be massive. It's going to be really big and I can't go down the aisle. So the idea was that there were three aisles in the theater. Me, Kim and Amy are each going down the aisle. And Kim was like, I can't go down the aisle. This is why I was so irritated with Kim. I was so mad. Y'all, I was, I was mad at Kim. <laughs> I was irritated with everything she was doing. This I, I love Kim, but on this day I was like, "This bitch is trying to trying to wedge me out of this fucking crown." So Kim, Kim this fucking bitch, Kim, <laughs> whoo, Kim what? was like, "I can't, I can't, um, I can't go down the aisle. My dress just it literally will not fit down the aisle. Uh-huh. What are we gonna do?" And then they were like, well, so there is this massive LED panel. It's huge. And it goes up. Like, you can fly it out and you can fly it in. And that's how RuPaul was revealed at the top of the show. RuPaul, they lifted this wall up and RuPaul popped up from behind this wall um, to, you know, to host a show. And Kim was like, I think I have to use the LED wall. <laughs> And she was, and they, and they were, and they were, and they were entertaining. They were like, so Naomi and Bob will walk down the aisle, and Kim will just appear from behind the LED the wall. wall. <laughs> and I was like, and I remember saying, absolutely not. I was like, absolutely <laughs> under zero circumstances. And they were like, what? And I was like, I'm telling y'all right now, there's no way that me and Naomi are walking down the aisle and Kim is popping up behind the same wall that RuPaul popped up after and the one that Violet Chosky, our current reigning, is coming out of? No. It elevates her to a level above us. There is no equity. And I'm not doing that. If she comes <laughs> oh down the wall, I was, I was like, if she comes down the wall, I'm not coming, I'm not coming down the aisle. I'm just going to walk. I'm just going to fucking walk on stage. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a it was a whole thing and they i think i can't remember i thought they even i feel like they even put her behind the wall for like a split second to see if it would work i gotta call naomi to see like what actually happened because i can i cannot remember naomi please do not okay, Monet, do you think she's gonna phone? answer is Monet, is naomi gonna answer yes or no naomi Monet? will she will no unless she's in the show she might be in the show right now I'm gonna say no. She's not gonna answer. What, she's, what time is it? She, she's in Vegas. She, she's off today. I spoke to her today. She goes, she, she's she's heading to Chicago right now. Yeah. Oh, no. she, is she is she in the air? No, she's lined it already. You don't know. You yes, you're making do. up news. We fake news. Earlier. Fake ass news. I ain't got time. Okay, you you call you call somebody. To, you dodged a little Your bullet earlier. <laughs> you dodged the bullet earlier, honey. Is what you did. You dodged the bullet because you because you because because you got you saw them co- reading the comments. Be like, damn, well, not, they didn't answer Monet now either. <laughs> Let's have Monet try calling anyway. Kim. No, 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 I don't want to call Kim. <laughs> Monet, shut your ass. The fuck. No, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to do it. Anyway, so I I threw a hissy fit and I was like, no, Kim's not coming from behind that fucking wall. <laughs> so we ended up going all down the aisle and oh, oh my god, magically Kim fit in the fucking aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Kim was G. Kim was like, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get, get my moment. She gonna work. 
So let's talk about these looks individually, shall we? Um, um Kim, also Jacob, can can you bring in the reference image for this uh origami dress? I think it's I think it's Givenchy, I think. Kim's is but it might be Kim's is it might fine. Be, it looks a little it looks a little not like the birds just aren't my fave. All that the origami birds. Oh, Naomi just texted me. She's at the night. She's at a, oh, she's I think she's at Roscoe's right now. No, she's in tomorrow. No, I think I guess she just sent me a picture. It looks like Roscoe's. I love her with her little podcast. Her podcast. I love. I mean, uh, her afro. Sorry, I'm trying to text her. Just on the pod, trying to remember the finale. Um. Anyway, um, I love her so much. I love her um, so much. But yeah, this is um. I, I mean, you know, I it's not my favorite thing I've ever seen Kim wear, but I, but I do like it though. Yeah, it's not my fave. Um, was it was it Givenchy dress, Jacob? <clears throat> I don't know it? if it was Givenchy specifically. I, I googled it, but I didn't see that. This is the dress that it came up when I typed in the reference. Um, I just posted it into the chat, and let's see, it's Christian Dior. 2000 spring summer 2007 oh no maybe, i don't think it was it was something is there another designer with a g g g gianni galliano? yes um kristen dior john galliano was um galliano. in charge of kristen dior in 2007 oh that's what it was yeah um anyway yeah see, crazy this, about the dress the reference yeah. image is fierce this is kind of kim's is not giving the reference yeah i'm not obsessed with it either yeah right, naomi is thing, um, Naomi's is simple. I think it's it's, it's classic. It has it has the fur. It has an old Hollywood feel. Again, the big choker uh, things. Naomi is she she made that trendy. Um, I think Naomi looks just looks pretty. It's 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 a classic old Hollywood look. It's not like oh my god, but it's not you know it's the final thing. Yeah, I think she looks very 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 classy in my opinion. Yeah, very classy. And I don't know who she's wearing. I think she might be wearing Dallas, but I don't really remember. And you are wearing Domino Couture, and I think this looks great. I love this dress. This is very pretty. I love it. Yeah, she is at she is at Roscoe's right now. Anyway, I love the um, asymmetry yeah. of it. Thank you. I really like this dress too. I I was very I was um find it back. The edge of this dress is burnt. Like to get that like the edge of it, <laughs> just took a lighter. I think I was doing it too, like burning the edge of the dress to get it to this like proper um look. And um, the shoes that I'm wearing. Kim lent me those shoes on the first episode of Drag Race. Oh, for your for your um uh, curtain dress. Yep, the shoes that I'm wearing are are they're spray painted gold, and they are just literally the shoes that Kim gave me on episode one of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And um, I really love I really love this dress. This this dress is actually currently in my in my apartment. Um, it was this is also in a museum. This 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 was at the Max Factory Museum next to Violet Chashki's uh winning gown. From um, season uh, seven of RuPaul's Drag Race, but the weird thing is, we go down there. When you went down there and you saw the dress, Violet's dress is on like a woman mannequin, and let me put my shit on a fucking nigga. My shit is on a man (laughs) ass mannequin. I said, if y'all don't get me a fucking plus size woman mannequin and put my shit on her, don't put my shit on no fucking man ass mannequin. Don't do that. Don't you ever do that shit again. That's hilarious. Y'all got me fucked up. That is hilarious. Man ass. I was. I was. I was like, y'all are. Wild. That's just hilarious. On a white man mannequin, had my dress up on a white man mannequin. I was like, "Give me my, give me my shit back. Give me my fucking shit back." <laughs> and let's talk about the creme de la creme, the Pierre de Resistance. Well, first let's talk about RuPaul, RuPaul's outfit. RuPaul's wearing this holographic uh, oh. gown. Yeah, between Bianca it was fine. It and made Katya. It made him look so. It looked, it looked beefy in the middle. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, uh, thing enough in the middle. But he looks yeah, RuPaul, pretty. Yeah, since you, RuPaul normally snatches in the waist. And mm-hmm. also, it looks like RuPaul got some bigger pads. But RuPaul's wearing that uh, gingham look on um, All-Star 7. I was like, RuPaul is looking thicker than a snicker up in this piece, honey. <laughs> um, all right, now, let's talk about one of the best looks in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race. So good. Truly. This is House of Caney. Um, this is Violet Chashki. And this is a look that actually came from behind the wall. Unlike Kim was trying to pull, a look <laughs> that came from behind the wall, and um, by, her her prosthetics like, are by Gage Monster, and and uh, she had to be lifted up in the freight elevator. 
she had to go up the stairs in the freight elevator. What under to, her? Look at the uh, first picture. Is she? What is that? Is that is that horse hair from the dress underneath giving it this, the structure? Yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's just her like more more garment because she was not on a thing. She was just walking with this heavy ass dress cinched tight as hell. Uh, this was a very good look. By the way, this dress is one of those dresses that people for years were like, "How's anyone gonna top this? How's anyone gonna mm-hmm. top this? How's anyone gonna top this dress?" Yeah. And people have finally stopped saying that. Somehow. This I think this last year people finally stopped saying. Do you think anyone has stopped this? In? Top this dress? I think in people's own ways they have all done really great jobs. I don't think anyone stepped down has been bad since season. Since this season. How, okay, how do you feel about um, how do you feel about Simone? We never talked about that. How do you feel about Simone stepped down? The jeans. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that it's not something I would ever wear, but I I, I think that um it's just it's, it's it is a it was it was a very elevated pair of jeans, and people who loved it were obsessed. They were like, if you don't if you don't like it, you just don't get it. And I was like, okay okay. Uh, like, people who liked it were like like I've seen people not like stuff before, but something about not liking some moans made people go bananas. Cr- did you notice this? Yeah, people were wild. I was like. Yo, people dislike people's outfits all the time. People were going, but if you didn't like Simone, they were like, yo, fucking dumb, ignorant ass. I was like, I mean, I I, I, didn't, I didn't hate it, but I, I was like, I just, I would have never, I would have never thought to wear that ever. Right. I would have never been like, I'm going to wear jeans and a tank top. Yeah. Oh, Naomi. Hi. You're on the pod. Hi. How was how things going at Roscoe's? Oh, it was good. I was just watching some drag before the finale where we watch our sister, Monet Exchange. And you know, we, love, we stand. Tomorrow. So listen, real quick. Do you remember uh, during our finale when Kim, when we had to go down the aisle and Kim was trying to appear from behind the LED wall? I do. And do you remember me throwing a hissy fit and being like, absolutely not? No, I absolutely remember we would gonna walk down the aisle unless you said something because it was not even in my brain but her dress was so big according to her (laughs) (laughs) that's what i said and kim was like i I have to come from behind the wall and i was like i'm telling y'all y'all need to figure some shit out we do a jump cut or something i was like but me and naomi are not walking down the aisle while kim appears from behind a fucking led wall and i think they even ran it once and i was watching and i was like i was sitting next to you and i was like no no. <laughs> oh, it was made up in Kim's mind. She was like, "I have to be the only one that does this. I will be Violet Chachki of the night." <laughs> yeah, I, and I was not having it. Anyway, I just want—I was just trying to remember if they actually ran it with her during rehearsal or not. I don't think so. It was like during the rehearsal, you were like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> <laughs> that was me. The whole—that was me during this during the promo tour during the the during the promo shoot. I would just walk around and be like, "No, we not doing." <laughs> <laughs> You were the first person I ever met that was like that, and that's why I love you so much. You taught me what no, how powerful no is. <laughs> I'd be acting like I am really running shit. No. <laughs> All right, I love you, baby. Fuck Lord. Fuck Lord. Fuck Lord. All right, I love you, baby. Bye. I love you. Bye. Oh, I love Naomi. How many times can you say we love Naomi? Um, yeah, so Violet fucking crushed it. She turned it. And um, it's just even the details having the veins. Wait, wait, what did you think of what did you think of um of Simone's look? I thought it was cool. You know me, I am I I, I love I love casual drag. But I as look, a step down look, as a step down, it's not. I would not do it for a step down. I would have. I would, it's not something that I would have done. But I can acknowledge that point of that that, that that I think it's a cool point of view. I mean, maybe if if I would have done it, I would have done it differently. Like maybe like do like a denim jean gown look, something like that. But not just like denim jeans like a t-shirt i would have maybe just did something else but i that, that didn't i mean to be fair clothing. in her defense it's not just a t-shirt it was like a sculpture but right i i, I do agree i would but it, it i will say this i think that her step down look was the most talked about step down look i genuinely think in drag maybe not save violet. this violet one maybe save but but outside of violets it was one of the most talked about step down looks in the history of the show, people were like talking about uh, no, it for a Bianca very long time. coming out and fully her, her body fully encrusted in in, in sequin. People will gag. There wasn't sequins. It was it was glitter. 
glitter, whatever. People, people were gagged by that. That was creep. Everyone, I don't remember when that when that came out. People was like, "What the fuck, work?" But I don't think it created as much conversation as Simone's piece because it was controversial. Like it was people like there was a lot of back and forth. There were like there was a lot of conversation about it. But you know, who knows? I, I can't quantify it. I'm sure some of the internet have, can run the diagnostics and and Google search Simone step down look and then look at all the trend and see when it was peaking. People are wild on the internet. Okay, so when you said that was a time of three, as RuPaul is like, obviously we we know they were they recorded Bob winning, Kim winning, and Naomi winning. Um, but um, when it was airing, were you like, were you when it was airing, like you you about to find out in real life? Were you like? Did you know you won or you thought maybe Kim was going to win? So let me just, so I just, I just uh, got a little tea and I found this out. When they film all the finales, like each option, they actually edit each one and send all of them in. So even the producers, like, so even there's like maybe th- three producers on Drag Race who know who wins Drag Race, mm-hmm. but even the editors who edit the show don't know who won Drag Race. Oh, yeah. They are. They are asked to edit all three versions or four or however many versions there are, and they send all of them in, and the network only airs one. Isn't that, I didn't, I didn't, I thought they just edited one and sent it over. Mm, no, I, I, I knew, I mean, I, I knew that from since All Stars 4, I knew that. All Stars 4 was what between, season 12, they had a last minute thing editing Sherry out, and then All Stars 4. They um apparently there was a whole cuff with that because as we know it was that like iMovie bootleg thing that we saw. What do you mean editing Sherry out? That Alaska did a thing editing, huh? Alaska did a thing editing Sherry out. What do you mean? Alaska? No, and I'm season twelve. They had to they had to edit Sherry out of the final thing. Like oh of, yeah yeah because you know yeah scamisha. Um, but anyway yeah um when when I was watching it I. You know, I didn't know because I, I really, to be honest, I really got in my head. There were, I felt pretty confident almost the entire season up until, I, I'll, I'll never get the moment. It was during RuPaul's keynote speech. And I could like hear RuPaul giving her keynote speech from my booth at DragCon. I was like walking outside and I could hear it. And I was listening to them. Like RuPaul was like, are you team Bob? And there was cheering. Are you team Naomi? And there was cheering. Are you team Kim? And it was like the roof went off the place. And I remember that really affected from that moment on. It just really affected my um, like I was like I don't think I'm I don't think I might I might not win Drag Race. Mm-hmm. I actually might not win Drag Race. This is wild. Well, There's Bob, a real winning chance. Winning is everything. Oh my God, what you ask me, bitch? I don't talk oh, about because when this comes out, <laughs> winning is everything. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We haven't we have not watched yet, girl. And um, girl, I, I saw the leak and the tea was there. I, I've got my dedos de los uh, manos crossed. Girl, thank you so much. But the leak, the leak doesn't have been had leaked. It. I saw, I saw the leak, and it was <laughs> leaking. Um, so anyway, so you know, if you want to see my live reaction, um, Viacom or VH1 or I think now it's Paramount or RuPaul's Drag Race, one of the channels has the name of the channel keeps changing because, <laughs> but um, um, VH1 at the time now Paramount um, posted you know, our live reaction. Yeah. And it seemed like Kim and Naomi knew because they were looking at me while I was looking at the screen. Well, Kim was looking at me. Anyway, it, w- it was a whole wonderful, wonderful moment. I won RuPaul's Drag Race. You were crying race. very profusely. I was crying. I was, I, I won Drag Race. Uh, Cynthia Lee Fontaine won Miss Congeniality. Cunt Geniality. And, and um, I think at the time, I was the longest reigning I think for a while I was the longest running um, queen of Drag Race, just based on time, not based on anything else. Well, congratulations! I might have made that up though. I was either the shortest running or there was something like something like that. Congratulations, Bob the Drag Queen! I'm very proud of you. I was very happy. I remember watching the pieces. I was very happy when you won. Um, and you're my little my little baby. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for um, thank you all for watching uh, a season of Watchery, a retrospective re and. Uh, maybe we can announce this now, just so you all know. Uh, our next season of Retrospective Re will Watchery. be stop confusing people. Anyway, <laughs> will be of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. <laughs>
Seven. seven. Y'all about to <laughs> gag, bitch. We're doing All Star Seven. We're going to talk about the shit from top to bottom, the real rip. The shit that went down that people trying to. Uh, we're talking about all of it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Uh, yeah, so that's starting next Monday. Um, this Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, as soon as I got the call, I called Bob, and we had benchmarked along the way of me getting ready. We would do podcasts, and we recorded so all of these podcasts like a year ago, and I was getting ready for the show. Y'all, we so, say the dates. Simone hadn't even won Drag Race. Yeah, yet. Simone hadn't even won, won Drag Race yet, and it's like me and Bob talking about like me going in, who I think is gonna be there, who I'm gonna dust, who I don't think is competition, like all this stuff. So all the real tea that we recorded over a year ago, we're releasing this coming Wednesday, and we'll put them out throughout the season. So yeah, so just so you know, so just to give you a, an example, we are literally it was we were we were documenting like everything before March twenty fifth, two hundred two thousand twenty one. Yeah, March twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. We were documenting uh, what it was like, you know, once we found once we found out, and me and Monet were trying to like I would you know help her get her package together and send her off, and I think we did an interview when she got back too. I feel like right when she got back, we may have done an interview. Did we, Jacob? No, we did not. No, we, we did <laughs> but not. But we could do one now we and on it. <laughs> But and and we also uh and we also uh I think we did a we did a snatch game rehearsal. Yeah. Um that is true. We reveal we reveal who gave Monet the idea to do Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um we reveal a lot of stuff that a is gonna be very spending. exciting. And we may or may not have some extra special <laughs> guests joining us uh throughout the season. So and we are gonna be we a, also may be doing a special Something with the full cast of All Star Seven, so a lot of some good fun stuff coming down the pipeline. So, girl, the Civic <laughs> Rivalry Patreon is about to be Litty Kitty Bandanas, honey. It's about to be quiet. Come on in, y'all. Duh. Come on in. It's about to be a wild ride. Take me for a ride, boy. Show me your wild side, boy. Yeah. All right. Um. So, thank you all so much, and we will. Um. We will uh, talk to y'all soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.